Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you are well. Today on the channel, we're going to have a look at the brand new Pokemon set, Twilight Masquerade. And unfortunately, this set does not sit well with me and doesn't sit well with a lot of people. So I'm making a video today to explain why I hate it so much. Um, on the video today, we're going to be looking at the reasons why, um, other people's opinions, and some information that I found on the web and on YouTube about the set. But First of all, if you're new to the channel, welcome. If you return to the channel, I'm glad to have you back. If you would like to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and help me get this channel towards a thousand subs, it'd be greatly appreciated. But with that said, first of all, Magma, are you ready? Because I know you hate this set. Me and Magma both hate this set. So let's get into it, and let's explain the reasons why I hate this set so much. Okay, everyone, so we're back. First of all, on the screen, if you're new to the channel or if you haven't seen this before, this is Pokemon, uh, Pokedata.io, Pokedata.com. In my opinion, the best website to get information about Pokemon cards, sets, English, Japanese, or otherwise. When you first come on the uh, on the website, you'll be great with this. And today, we're going to have a look at Twilight Masquerade. First of all, before I go any further, I will prefacise that this video is my opinion. Okay, everyone is entitled to their own opinion, regardless of your opinion, if you agree with me, disagree with me, or whatever, I would genuinely love to hear in the comments what you think of Twilight Masquerade. Okay, first of all, reason I hate the set, okay, there is, for me, there is very, very little in the way of offerings in terms of art, in terms of Pokemon, that I myself would be interested in, okay? Um, start at the at the very top. When you load into the into the Pokemon Data.io and you go into a set, it will always show you the most expensive cards. Which ones are selling the best first? Pokedata.io takes its information from um, eBay and it has PSA reports and TCG player data and stuff like that. So it's really useful. First on the list is one of the very few cards that I actually like. Right, we have this Greninja. AX card, um, great looking card, um, shame I can't get to go on the other side of the screen, but never mind. Um, Greninja AX, you know, it's a great looking card, okay? A lot of people have um, liked it so far, and so on and so forth. A lot of Greninja fans out there, can't get wrong. But then after that, what is there to offer for me, personally? Second most expensive is Carmine, okay? Why? What, what's so great about that Carbine card? Purely for the fact that it's a special illustration rare? Doesn't really offer anything to me. Perrin, not great. Seen better cards. Parasol Lady from Temporal Forces or uh, uh, Paradox Rift or whenever it was. Parasol Lady is much better than that. Um, the Ursa Luna AX card, again. So what? Doesn't really matter. Not a fan. Um, we do have a collectible card here, which is Eevee. This is for the this is for the Eevee hype. Okay, right. It's an Eevee card. It's small. It's fluffy. It's cute. Again, for me personally, now, nah, not really interested. In terms of um, cards and number of cards and collecting and value wise, um, th there's not a lot that I want. I don't even like the pack art. You know, I collect all kinds. I'm, I'm a sealed collector at heart, really. I collect three pack blisters um, and the odd ETB and stuff like that. I don't even like the pack art. Okay. Um, now, when we go into the into the card numbers, this is obviously um, a small uh, a smaller set. We're going to go by higher numbers first, right? We don't need to look at the comments. Or two hundred twenty six cards in this set, um, down from Temporal Forces, which had um, a lot more um, Paradox Rift, which had even more cards like 240, we'll go back to look at them. But starting at the top, where all the most expensive cards and the collectible cards should be, and we'll work our way down. Luminous Energy Gold card being done several times, several times. We don't need another Luminous Energy card in general. We especially don't need another Secret Rare. Buddy Buddy Poffin, um, people of uh, the Pokemon company have put that in there, in my opinion, because it is a playable card. You can buy the, the Buddy Buddy Puffin cards for like two pence, pennies, pennies. They put the secret one, the secret rare in there to inflate the set, inflate the price, so people will buy it to make the decks look better. Okay, for those competitive TCG players out there, 
This is that's one of the ones that we would drip your deck out with. Okay. The Air Saloon card full art isn't great. Orgapon. Did it really need to have an Orgapon where we have a, a full art and a special illustration rare of all the Orgapons? Did it really need a gold card secret rare? No. Um, looking through, I'm trying to look for cards that I would actually like to pick up. Um, and I haven't found one yet. Let's have a look at the special illustration rares now. The Perrin. Milana's aid is cute. The, um, the Carmine is rubbish. And then in the special illustration rare, we have not one, but four of the Orgapon masks. We've got the Cornerstone, the Wellspring, uh, the Hearth Flame, and the, and the Tail Mask. Did it really need all four to be in a special illustration rare slot? Could one of them not gone in an illustration rare slot and put something a different Pokemon in? I understand it's the it's the poster child for the set. It's on the pack art, etc. Like you know Greninja and stuff like that. Did it really need four? Could we have not put Torkoal or something in there? It it isn't great. Sinistee again. The the, the artwork for Sinistee is poor. It's, it's been done better before. I think that Sinistee art is trying to replicate the Groudon um, from one of the previous sets and not feel in terms of darkness and stuff. Um, the full arts, full arts are full arts, full art trainers, especially your full art trainers. The, the worth absolute pennies so you can see, five pound. You can get Lucian for less than a pound. Lu this is a brand new set, guys, a brand new set. And the, the full art trainers are already less than a pound in some places. Uh, full art Pokemon. Um, again, we have three of the cards are terrestrial types, uh, as you can see there, with the same color background, all white. Like there is no, there's no difference in the cards. There's no, they're all plain. They all look the same when you look at it. On the basis of it, all those cards basically are the same. Orgapon again. We have the Dragapult. Why Dragapult didn't get a special illustration rare? Who knows? Sinistee didn't get a special illustration rare. Don't know why that is. Going down here, the actual better cards in this set, all the, the full arts and the special illustration rares are pretty crap, expect, except Greninja. All the, all the fun stuff is in the illustration rare. But when I say all of it, there isn't much of it, okay? One card I do like there is Timber. I love the Pokemon cards where they're obviously telling the story. The Pokemon's either in part of a workplace. If, if, if you think back, and I forget what set it was recently, there was an extra drill um, underground with some miners and stuff. That was really good. Timber here. Probe Pass is all right. Um, the Enamorous card. I actually like the Enamorous card because that reminds me of when anime art gets that extra bit of money into the budget, so it goes that bit harder, and then it actually represents a bit better. Really good. Um, Heliolisk, not very good. Wattrel, not a fan of that art. That Cramorant art, I hate when Pokemon do blurry art. It's really unnecessary. I understand they're trying to do something different. For me, personally, it doesn't work. Um, the Infernib is really nice. The Infernib throws me back to kind of black and white vibes, uh, black and white full arts and stuff like that. That Inferno would be probably one of maybe three or four cards out of this set I would maybe like to get. Maybe like to get. Um, but yeah, as well as the Sunflora. I think that Sunflora art at the bottom there in the middle is probably the best card in the set for me. That for a £2 card, I actually genuinely think that's the best looking card in the set. I really, really do. Um... Then we're in the, the energies and stuff like that. But for a set where I can only pick three or four cards out, I think it's a poor performance from Pokemon, to be honest with you. Um, really poor. Um, it helps me in one way, because it means I don't have to master set something that I don't want to, and I can quite happily invest my money in Paradox Rift and Temporal Forces, which are two absolutely banging sets. Um, but yeah, that is my opinion on the art. Now on to the next issue, which was... Short printing. Okay, guys, so short printing. For those of you who are new to the hobby or been in the hobby but never heard the phrase before, short printing is where the Pokemon company are printing either a little bit or a lot less of a particular set. In this case, 
Twilight Masquerade. Now, the reason is, is because the hype around this set is rock bottom. You can go on TCG Player and go on the specialist graphs where it shows the interest and the want of the new sets coming out where they, where they take um, analytics from how many ETBs and loose blisters and three pack blisters that customers have bought on TCG Player and it is rock bottom. It's absolutely rock bottom. On YouTube as well, when you go through YouTube, you can see that we've got some really big people in the Pokemon scene, um, like uh, PC Radio, and he's a, he's a really, really good YouTuber. I won't click any of the videos because I don't want to be taken for any like um, copyright or whatever, anything like that, but there are some really good ones. The best one being, and I'll put a link in this video, in his, in his channel below, is probably Danny Phantom. I've watched a lot of videos what Danny Phantom has to say on this, as well as going to some of the links that he has on his videos to websites, if that makes sense, about short printing. Um, there is low demand for this set because people aren't interested in. And the reason that, that is, is because of the scheduling. Um, a lot of people are feeding back to Pokemon, companies are feeding back to say that they are releasing too many sets in a year and it is causing detrimental demand for sets. If we go back years and years ago, they used to, Pokemon used to release three, maybe four sets a year, maybe. Um, this year so far, um, they've released far more than that with many, many months to go. Um, we already have the next set, the 6.5 set, the shrouded, whatever it's called, uh, coming out later. Um, as well as the set, um, people aren't interested in this Twilight Masquerade. There's, there's a few playable cards, but there's not enough playable cards to get the TCG uh, population interested from the sounds of it. And um, that's why it is going to be short printed. I hate the fact that it's going to be short printed because when Pokemon short print something, that thinks that they are going to create artificial demand for the set. So they say, oh, something's going to be short printed. So the investors automatically go, well, if it's going to be short printed, I will buy more and keep it in my cupboard somewhere. So in five years time, it'll be worth a lot more. Won't happen. Won't happen. It will happen maybe 10 years down the line as the set ages, but it will be for, for the fact that the set is aging, not the fact that it's going to be short printed. They did the same trick. The famous one is with Ultra Prism. Pokemon said they were going to short print Ultra Prism, which they did, but however, you can still go out now and find Ultra Prism cards, three pack blisters and stuff, at a really, really competitive and cheapest price. You can buy a three pack blister, right? It's Ultra Prism, it's been out a while, you can buy one for £30. It's easy. I've got multiple links and I've bought multiple on eBay where there are £30. It's easy. Just because something is going to be short printed by Pokemon does not mean to say the set will get any better. It just means Pokemon have given up on it and will move on to something else. Whether the shrouded, whatever it's going to be called, is any better, we don't know. The set after that, we don't know. Um, but we are pretty much going to be halfway through a series now um, of Scarlet and Violet. And as we know, when you get through a series, the second half of the Pokemon cards are normally better. It sounds to me like Pokemon have dropped the ball. On Twilight Masquerade, they know they've dropped the ball, so they're going to create artificial hype by saying it's short printed, which to me is a load of bollocks. Um, as you can see, there's loads of people here on YouTube um, going on about it, being short printed. Like I say, link in the description below for Danny Phantom. Um, go and check him out, Honest Guy. Now, speaking of Danny Phantom, that links me on to the next problem with this set, which is pull rates. So back to poll rates, back onto YouTube. Again, we're looking at some of the stuff from Danny Phantom. Danny Phantom is extremely good at doing analytical videos, giving breakdowns of uh, sets and poll rates. Danny normally opens, and I'm going to say this because I haven't watched all of them, but I've watched a few of them. Normally opens around 2,000 packs, and he will give a detailed Excel spreadsheet to show how many um, of a specific card he's pulled and what that equates to in poll rates. The pull rates in Twilight Masquerade are abysmal, absolutely abysmal. Um, he's actually opened thousands of packs and still hasn't pulled, at the time that I've watched it, he hasn't pulled two cards. He's still missing two special illustration rares. Danny always goes for master sets. He'll pull cards until he does it because he's a generous guy. He puts master sets together and he gives them out to the public. He gives them out to the, to the community. Really, really good guy. 
as you can see here, if we go down a bit, um, he said here, over 2,300 packs of Master Set filled. 2,300 packs and still no Master Set. Um, I think Pokemon, in not just this, but in recent sets, have nerfed the pull rate to the point where it's beyond a joke, if I'm being honest. Um, some of the cards that people want just can't be pulled. Again, creating artificial hype, creating um, a, a crazy demand on places like eBay, card market, where some single cards are crazy value. Honestly, crazy value. Um, in a few months, when new sets have come out, obviously the price will drop, but that doesn't take away from the fact that the prices are sky high right now because of mistakes that Pokemon have done. Uh, po I, th I think Danny, as well, has actually done um, a video on saying that he is going to give up on a master set. I'm just going to click into his channel uh, and see if that's the case. I'm sure we had a video titled about that. Uh, finally, uh, end of an era. As you can see, there's a lot of he's got a lot of pictures here with a sad face on. There, I'm giving up on Twilight Masquerade master set. Danny never gives up. He never gives up. He's, he's one of the most hard working people in the Pokemon space. And the fact that he's put a video on there saying he's going to give up is, is just sad. Not his fault. I'm not having to go at Danny. I'm having to go at Pokemon. You know what I mean? Um, 200 booster boxes. Um, where the SIRs. Obviously, he's got that there. Um, but if you want to go and check out those th those videos, go and check them out, guys. So, that's going to be it. To summarize, obviously, I am not a fan because of the art. Um, I don't like the Pokemon that's in it. I don't like the way the Pokemon are artificially hyping up the uh, uh, the set by saying it's going to be short printed. I don't like the poll rates, and I don't like what Pokemon's done with the set on a whole, really, um, if I'm being honest. So that's my five pence worth. Anyway, guys, we always finish the channel here on a positive note. Now, obviously, we're a Pokemon channel. Here, we open Pokemon cards. So coming up on the next video, we're going to be open Twilight Masquerade, okay? I ordered this ages ago on pre-order, and these came from my good friends who sponsor the channel, Gamers at Heart. Um, Gamers at Heart, if you go, um, <laughs> if you go into the link below and go visit their website, if you use my code NE Cards, you will get an additional five percent off your purchase. They give free delivery on everything over twenty pounds, and they are the best in prices around on the internet. So what we're going to be doing is if you keep an eye out for the upcoming live stream, I'll be doing a live stream just on Twilight Masquerade, where I'll be opening up, but I am going to give away every single card. Everything you, everything I've got will be going to someone else, and I would rather have all the cards that I have going out in the community in, to people who like this set and want to complete it and want to have fun with it. So this one will be for you guys. So keep a look out. In the um, in the notifications in the live section for the upcoming stream based purely on Twilight Masquerade. And if you like that idea, and if you like this video, hit the like button. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, guys. I can't make this channel grow without your support. And thank you for all the support you've given so far. But that's going to be it, guys. And as always, stay safe, look after yourselves, and until next time, guys. I'll see you later.